What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 23 and we start today's episode off on the back of the heartbreaking Carabao Cup final loss to Manchester United where we were so close to ending Everton's near 20 year wait, could have just said 19 year, 19 year wait for a major honour. Deli Alley heading in a Matt Doherty cross with about 20 minutes to go. I thought we were going to win it. Five minutes later, Marcus Turan leveled it. And in the extra time, we virtually the final kick of the game. Tyree Stolen won it for Eric Ten Hag's side. So how do you respond from that? A chance to qualify for Europe via winning the cup. A chance to end the trophy drought of nearly two decades. How do you pick yourself up from that? Well, look at the league table right now. Very tight indeed in the race for a European spot. Not many games remaining as we now enter March. you got to say, really, we need to go on a good run of form if we are to keep pace with the likes of our first opponents today, Newcastle, Chelsea, Arsenal right next to us as well. We've got to go on a good run of form and pick our heads up from that. Heading into the first game of today's episode, taking on Newcastle United, Carabao Cup semi-final, we came to St. James's Park and we flipped the script to win this tie, dump out the Magpies and make it through to the final. Well, they were looking for revenge in this game and they got the opening goal as well. Gabriel Martinelli, the former gunner, turning in a rebound as Newcastle took the early lead and after we hit the woodwork soon afterwards through Conor Gallagher, 34 minutes in, Eddie Howe side looking for their double and they will get it. Great little one-two between Martinelli and Callum Clutch Wilson and the Brazilian makes it too. So uh, yeah, my idea of a dream response was looking unlikely in this game, but I thought to be fair, we've been the comeback kings all season long. So why not in the second half come from behind again to claim some points? One stroke of the hour mark, this kind of summed it all up. Tossi and Ada Rabayo unfortunately tries to cut out a cross. It hits Pickford, it goes straight to Bruno Guimar Reyes. And it's Brazil that right now is the nation of choice for Newcastle fans. I don't know what else I was trying to say there. Basically, the goal scorers were Brazilian and they had in, had in all four of the goals as well because. Grimar Reyes rolled through Callum Wilson, and whilst it was late on, you couldn't really call this going clutch with the game already finished. Newcastle 4, Everton 0. Embarrassing. And, you know, sometimes when you're on the back of a really heavy loss, it's, it, it's only kind of natural to be quite pessimistic about the following game, and you think, oh, God, you know, if anything like last weekend, you know, we get battered again. But, you know, sometimes, you know, those those devastating losses are, are really like a catalyst for you to respond in the following game. I often mention this myself, like normally when I come on the back of a big slip up or, a, you know, a big choke or, um, you know, just a heartbreaking defeat or a thumping, normally I go into the following game. And I just turn it on. I just go absolutely ham. This was not one of those times. I was 4-0 down with 10 minutes to go. And whilst I did reduce the goal difference deficit with Calvert-Lewin and Mavadidi grabbing late ones, in the end, there were nothing other than consolations. Final score, Newcastle United 4, Everton 2. So, any chance of us making Europe has just taken an absolutely... Massive blow. And I thought heading into the following game, sod this. I'm picking my head up. I'm picking the boys' heads up. And we are picking the win up in the following game. Because this is just embarrassing, man. Like, seriously. What a humiliating loss away at the Magpies. I've already had one this season without drubbing away against the championship side, Blackburn Rovers. Following game, I've got to get a big win here against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Yes, a little bit nervy, but I love to see this on the stroke of the hour mark after no chance in the first. Callum hudson Adoy's night for the year breaks the deadlock and the former Chelsea man makes it 1-0. Runs all the way over to celebrate with me as well. I love the realism there. Doxy boy feeling a little bit of pressure maybe. Humiliated in the FA Cup by a championship side. Bottled the Carabao Cup final. Big drubbing to Newcastle. Possibly dropping out of European places. Well, the, the, the team has still got my back. Even if the border a little bit uncertain. Even so, Hudson Adoy open score makes it 1 0. And, you know, I, I really should have won this game by a lot more goals here. Seriously, I dominated the entire game, to be honest. And the fact I was only leading by one was only really because my finishing was just so poor. Case in point, 50 minutes to go. Somehow, Conor Gallagher misses the target. Thankfully, in the end, I didn't need a second goal. A 1 0 scoreline was enough for us to get the three points. Hudson Adoy's ninth for the year. 
this guy, like, unbelievable. Like, seriously, when I signed him at the start of the season, I got to be honest, like, the first few games, I wasn't really getting on with him. I wasn't really doing very well with him. But, you know, to be fair, since the early struggles, he's been, I would say, my second or possibly third best player of the team. He's been unbelievable since that early struggle there. And, you know, I, I guess it's one of those 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 kind of, like, lessons, you know. Like, sometimes if you get off to a bad start, don't, you know, don't, don't throw in the towel. Like, seriously, I mean, the whole season has been built on comeback wins and comeback results, you know. So if you had a tough start... Well, hopefully this season is kind of proof of the pudding. It, you, you can still turn it around. Keep it going. Persistence pays off. I love that saying. So, anyway, following game here, away, uh, the Zerbi side, Brighton, on the South Coast, heading into this game for back-to-back wins. Mather did he? You know, like, seriously, another one of those players who, like, I haven't really gotten on with too well since we bought him in uh, last season midway through. That was mainly to get Anthony Gordon to Newcastle, of course. We sort of just took him as what we call, like, not collateral damage, but it was kind of like the... Uh, the way to do it, if you will. But anyway, yeah, uh, taking on Brighton here, um, away from him. Mavadidi, second goal in three games. And to be fair, again, he he's not the sort of player that I've really been too keen on. But, you know, the whole point, like, seriously, there's no reason why he can't come good at some point. You know, two goals in three. We then went 2 nil up in the second half to double our lead. And with 20 minutes to go, holding on to the clean sheet here. Great save by Jordan Pickford and uh, Van Uick fantastic block there to deny the goal from close range. So, still leading by two goals to nil. We're definitely responding on the back of the drubbing to Newcastle. I love this. 17 minutes to go. We're leading by two. Are we trying to conserve energy? Are we trying to put our foot on the ball? Brighton started a good chance. You know, try and kill the clock. No, we're going on the offensive and looking for more chances. And we create one and get a goal. Quick counter-attack. And it was three yellow shirts on the goalkeeper. In the end, it is Amadou Onan who capitalises at the back stick to make it three. Final score, Brighton nil, Everton nil. What a response on the back of the loss to Newcastle there. Two big clean sheets and big wins as well. So, that win now means we're nine games to go. I'm not even looking at the top four. Now, I'm going to be honest, there is an outside shot. Like, there is an outside shot that I could potentially drag us in to the Champions League. But I'm not thinking about it. I'm not getting too far ahead of myself right now. All I'm thinking about is is Arsenal that are below us on the table. We're in seventh place right now, and as we know in uh, in uh, in the Premier League, uh, top four Champions League, fifth lock Europa League, sixth practically always Europa League on rare occasions it won't be, and seventh, again, practically always Europa Conference League on rare occasions it won't be. But at the moment, that's all I'm thinking about right now. Forget about fourth place, just focus on where you are in the table right now. And that is definitely another lesson which I've really been guilty of not really, you know, learning and practicing if you will um, especially in, in recent years that sometimes you know you're so set on the future and where you could get you forget about where you are in the moment right now you know you need to concentrate on that to make sure you don't fall you know so taking on Fulham following game here this needed to be a banker side down the bottom of the table struggling at mind sleep taking on Marco Silva so we took two of the players off him back in deadline day tossing out a Rabio and this lad Anthony Robinson what a signing he's been by the way, bought him in on deadline day, spent nine and a quarter million on him, and of course this was to bring him back, he's an Everton Academy graduate, we brought him back to Goodison Park, nine and a quarter million, this dude has been fantastic, absolutely brilliant, even started the Carabao Cup final for me against Manchester United as well, like he, he is so good, like he is really good, I bought him in primarily just to be a backup for Michael Enko, because Ruben Vinegre just isn't developing, and I'm going to look to sell him in the summer, my... Like, Michael Enko's superb, but at the moment, I'm preferring Anthony Robinson. He popped up with a game winner, and what a way to get his first goal back at Everton. A game winner against his former team. It was always going to happen, wasn't it? So, yeah, big win there against Fulham. Three straight wins, three straight cliches. No doubt about it, Everton have responded. That's how you get up from two devastating blows in a row. First, the Carabao Cup loss to Manchester United, where we bottled it from a leading position, and then the big thrashing away at St. James's Park. What a response from the toffees but I said it at the top of the episode we are to stay in a European place consistency will be the name of the game with it so tight in the table right now we can't win one or two and then fail to win the next two and hope that'll be enough no 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 we've got to string wins together and heading into the final game today Crystal Palace Goodison Park Patrick Vieira side a tough game obviously taking on Palace right before the break 
DCL. Dominic Calvert-Lewin gives us the lead and we had the advantage right before half-time. Sadly, though, we would lose our clean sheet for the first time in four games. Mateta uh, converting from close range. Simple finish there as Palace found their level with 18 minutes to go. Looking to find a second goal, get back in front for the second time, win this game. DCL turns his man. Brilliant save, though, and Palace would scramble it away. And really, in the final 15 minutes, this is a fantastic closeout to the game. Really going at Crystal Palace, trying to find a late winner, putting them under as much pressure as possible. Golden chance with six minutes on the clock. Oh, so he might have scored my first goal. I really should have got him a hat trick, or at least two. Hits the post late on, and then a dice pass cut out and cleared. Final score, Everton 1, Crystal Palace 1. Fans frustrated, but it is no losses in four, to be fair. And, I mean, nine points, uh, sorry, ten points for a possible 12. Nothing to be sniffed at. But as we come into the closing stages of the season, with April about to begin, we have got... Seven games remaining. We are seven clear of Arsenal. Though they've got a game in hand and can cut it to four and probably uh, beat their win the goal difference battle as well. Uh, we are seven behind Man City. Again, fourth is still possible. But all I'm thinking about is Arsenal in eighth place. Keep them at bay and we'll qualify for Europe. The question is, with seven games to go, are we going to bottle it again? Or will this time we learn from our mistakes? Well, that will end today's episode of the Realist Criminal, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you haven't, please do drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the penultimate episode of Season 2 in the Realistic Career Mode. Very soon.